It's time for the match preview. We're going to be looking at Luton Town versus Sheffield Wednesday. And with me to have a look at this game and give his thoughts is my co-host, Mark Ryman. How are you getting on this evening, Mark? Yeah, I'm really good, thanks, Ali. Feeling positive. What a good week it's been for us Luton fans as well. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm feeling optimistic for a change, I think, about the game. So, yeah, well, let's see how it goes. But, yeah, positive. What a week it's been. Started off with that win against Millwall at the Den. Planning application yeah. submitted to the council and then capped off with Alfie Doughty signing a new long-term deal. Yeah. Best news, isn't it? Uh, best signing of the summer as well. Um, incredible news, and uh, and and I think his performance in the last game against Millwall started to show back to where we know he can be with Alfie Dowsey, um, and probably to do with him settling that contract helps as well. I guess, yeah, fantastic news. So key to how we play. Great bit of news, and it, it protects us. Uh, just in case someone does come knocking in January, no one can take the piss. No one can, no. you know, lowball us. Essentially, there's a price on his head now. Yeah, and it'll be considerably higher than that 15 million that was already put on there in the summer. You'd think now, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, a lot more years. I do think if we don't get promoted, that there must be some sort of non-promotion clause in there. But that's. That's a problem for another day. Let's not even worry about that. But before we actually look at this game, just a quick reminder, if you're watching this on YouTube, drop a like. It only takes a second. And subscribe for even more Luton Town content. Right, let's take a look at Luton Town versus Sheffield Wednesday now. It's pretty good over the last seven games that we've played them. Luton Town have won four. Sheffield Wednesday have won twice, and we've had one draw. So the last time that Sheffield Wednesday beat us was actually our first season back in the championship under Graham Jones. Does that make you feel more at ease, or are you... <laughs> well, what I'm, could I'm... go wrong here? <laughs> yeah, we're setting it up, aren't we? It's like we're setting ourselves up now. I was at that game, actually. I think that was, that was my first time at Hillsborough as well. Um and I remember being quite frustrated, as I was a number of games in that season. Uh, the one that sticks in my head with Sheffield Wednesday is that 3-2 win with the uh, Adebayo header at the back stick in the Ooh. last, whatever it was, when we were losing 2-0. Um, yeah, what a comeback that, that was. Yeah, 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 that was uh, yeah, that was the last time we played them at home. It was uh, yeah. 27th of February 2021. That's very specific knowledge. Very good. <laughs> um, yeah, what a comeback. Terrible first half. Absolutely appalling. Excellent second half. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, we've, we've, been, we've been looking far better um, over the last probably, you know, couple of games, really. Obviously, the, the QPR reaction to their first goal was, was the problem. But in most of that game, we looked very good. Um, I, and, and as I said earlier, I'm feeling optimistic about it. Um, it doesn't mean that they they can't get something though. They are a good team. They've got a good manager. Um, it's not going to be easy. No game in the championships easy at all. I just think it's the best opportunity we've got to now start putting a little run together. It is indeed. And look, Sheffield Wednesday come into this off the back of you know also another one nil away win. They they beat Blackpool. Mm. Yeah, they beat Blackpool. Yeah, I imagine did. that yeah, was yeah, that that yeah. was in the cup, wasn't it? I was oh, looking right. at that. Yeah, cup. I have yeah. I have it all up here. And I'm looking at it. I'm like Black Blackpool. Blackpool yeah, aren't in the the championship. <laughs> Steve Bruce has done wonders in the two games he's been there to get promoted already, isn't he? Um, <laughs> yeah. No, <laughs> yeah, it was in the cup. I mean, you probably would say I think that they had a pretty changed team from that. So I don't know how much you read into the League Cup, but. Yeah, it's a, it's it will probably help heal some of the wounds in, from that ninety sixth minute equaliser from QPR last week. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking that their last championship game was that game where yeah. there was that mad gold mouth scramble, and uh, yeah, um, so essentially, I think they're a position below us in the table. 
we have the same amount of points, but obviously it's early days, so we can't really yeah. properly look at form. And I feel off the back of that Millwall game, we're really getting ready to take off. That's that's the feeling I get. And with mostly a clean bit of health throughout the team, I think it's only Jacob Brown and Daiki Hashioka that are likely to miss out on this one. Yeah, um, exactly. And I, I think you, you're right. We are on the same points. We are pretty much the same on goal difference. The difference is that our win came in the last game and their win came in the first game. So the difference in form coming into it will, will probably make a bit of a difference there as well. What an awful way to concede an equaliser after spending an entire match at nil-nil. Barry Bannon to do what Barry Bannon does. Um, only for that goal mouse scramble in the 96th minute. That's got to be gutting. Um, and we know what it's like to have gutting results in the, in the last few moments against QPR. Don't guess wrong, we, we know it. And um, and it, it's, it's tough to take. Um, I think, yeah, I, I, I think we've, we've got to be wary of, of the comeback. But I think from a Luton point of view... You know, we're 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 owed or we're due rather a decent performance and result at home, aren't we? Um it's it's been a while obviously since that since that Bournemouth game. Um and certainly been a while since the last three PM kickoff as well. Well we've been saying it for weeks though. The blueprints are there, the chances yeah. are being created, and this will be a completely different game to that Millwall game where you know it's not going to be an attritional game of, you know, balls being hurtled into the box and having to defend, but it, it's going to be more technically minded. The midfield are going to have to play because I think with Sheffield Wednesday, a lot goes through Barry Bannon. Yeah, yeah and Shay Charles, the, uh, uh, their youngster on loan from Southampton as well, looks a player, doesn't he? Their defensive midfielder, I think, between them. Um, yeah, you keep. I know it's easier than it sounds with, especially with Barry Bannon. Um, but you know, you keep him quiet, or, or just his left foot. Really, the rest of him can do what he wants. But you keep his left foot quiet, and 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 you can you can get most way there to to start winning that battle in midfield. Yeah, and we actually had um, Matt from Wednesday till I die on the opposition view. Like, if you're watching on YouTube, go check out that video. We'll, we'll link it beneath this one. And he actually pointed out a few players that look like they are quite dangerous. He actually singled out their goalkeeper as one to watch. James Beadle, he's on loan from Brighton. Apparently, he's all legs and arms, but it should be an interesting one. Um, apparently, he's he's really legit. He came in last season on loan, and he kept five clean sheets in his first 10 games. Like... All we need right now is oh, a, a keeper yeah. that's that turns yeah. into prime Lev Yashin. Yeah. Unbelievable. Can we not have some keepers that can just throw it in the back of the net like Ethan Horvath? When are you playing Cardiff? We need <laughs> some keepers. Seriously. We've had how many goalkeepers have had worldy saves against us already? It's ridiculous. That's all we need. Yeah, the the lad from Brighton, he he, he does look he does look promising. I, I would say, obviously. Uh, you know, I've not watched much Sheffield Wednesday, but they have conceded quite a lot of goals. Yeah, um, ten. So, so exactly. So you know, I'm not uh, just on that stat alone. I think you know, th they, there's definitely the opportunity for for Eli and Morris to get off the mark if indeed they both play. Um, I'm sure we'll talk about that in a bit, but um, you'd say there's definitely opportunities there. And you're right, it is going to be a completely different game. The way Wednesday play football. Um, through the midfield, I think will suit us a bit more. Uh, I think it will give us the opportunity to play through um, the thirds that we want to. Um, and I, I can see Alfie and whoever else plays at wing back um, getting some joy down the sides as well. Yeah, well, looking through their squads, you know, it, it'll be nice to see Akin Famuo come back, you know. Yeah. Um, he, he never really. Well, he, he was whisked away to Norwich B or the Norwich under-21s at quite a young age. Um, so he never really had a, a full go at Luton. Um, seeing Jamal Lowe potentially lining up, that worries me because he always causes problems against Luton. Yeah, they've got both the Lowe's at the moment, haven't they? Um, I don't know. Is he fit? 
Um, I hope Lowe, not. I'm not sure whether he's fit, but if he's not, I'll be very pleased because you're right. He's caused us problems in the past. He's caused a lot of side problems in the past, and we know when he's on it, um, he's he's a tricky player to deal with, definitely. And they've got a few of those. I think their main striker, Ugbo, last season particularly was very good as well, although he's not really hit form this season too. He can be a dangerous player. Josh Windass, we know, can be a dangerous player when on form, but he can do pretty miraculous things. So, yeah, it's... Yeah. There's no easy game in the league. I think we've we've said already on our um, championship show that how how good they can be and and how much we rate them as a team. They've done some really good business over the summer, definitely. Um, but I do think our quality of player should be able to to win some of those battles in in midfield and out wide as well. So let's take a look at the quality of player we have. So last game it was a bit of a strange lineup maybe it was just an adapted an adapted pick from rob edwards specifically for the millwall game where he knew it was going to be attritional and you know pack the midfield type of thing but elijah adebayo was quite isolated up top that colton morris comes on for his 100th appearance which was amazing to see but do we persist with the same formation or do we or the same picks uh, or do we perhaps take Jordan Clark out, bring on Colton Morris so we can actually attack with two up top? Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think Eli looked a little bit stranded up there, didn't he? And I wonder if that is tactical for Millwall. I, I imagine uh, that that we could well see Morris um, as a two. I'd like to see it. I mean, it's so hard to predict because I think in some ways he, he, he did make some changes for Millwall, which clearly worked. But as a result of that, now there's a really difficult decision. I think the most difficult decision is going to be on that right-hand side of the defence with Burke um, versus Royal, Wal Royal Walters. For me, Burke was our man of the match and was excellent. Um, I don't know how you can fit four people into a three-man defence. Maybe you can help me with that. But I I'm struggling with that particularly. But certainly, I think up top, I think Clark had one of his quieter games for us, really did. Um, we know what he can be like, but I think he was a little bit quieter against Millwall, probably the style of play. Um, Walsh was brilliant. Um, You'd be keep the same two in. in midfield, right? Yeah. Like Walsh and Akamba so. work so well together, linking up for Mengi's goal yeah. as well. You'd think so, yeah, definitely. But I agree with you. I'd like to see someone, either Morris or, or Taylor, up top with, with Eli just to, to give him some support up there, definitely. So the change I would make, and it's it's quite harsh on Amari Bell, but when, when it comes to playing out from the back, which we are persisting with, whether we like it or not, I would take Amari Bell out of the starting lineup, put Alfie Doughty on the left, and Ruel Walters can fit in that right wing back position. I think the back three of Mengi, McGuinness, and Burke should not be touched because that is without doubt our best back line, man for man. Yeah, I guess my only worry is that is the left footedness of Bell and the left sidedness of it. And I, I think Mengi for me never looks as convincing on the left hand side. For me, he's much more effective on the right. And yeah, he scored a great goal. And and don't get me wrong, we know he's class. He's probably up, you know our best defender, if you look at it overall. I just, I, I worry slightly about him on the left, but it could work. But I agree with you. I think those three are probably our best three defenders. I just think I like Bell's left-footedness. That's the only thing I would say. Yeah, uh, for me, like, playing in that left wing back position. He's more convincing a left centre back. His yeah. pace is such a good asset in terms of getting getting back and, and bailing um, McGuinness out of trouble or whoever plays in the middle of that three. Mm. I felt when he was playing higher up in the left wing back position, a big problem with the, the playing out from the back. He'd received the ball from Mengi. He'd received the ball from McGuinness. And it was either lose the ball or, well, get caught in possession, or the ball went straight back to Mengi. The, but to be honest, I feel like the real issue of playing out from the back came from Kaminsky's choices about who to play the ball out to, how long he was waiting to play the ball out. Like, I, I am not an advocate of playing out from the back, but 
if that is the way we're going, we just have to get better at it, better at beating that initial press. Like that is what we really struggle with against Millwall. Um, it'll be interesting to see how we can beat it against Sheffield Wednesday. I guess it's one of those things we have to see, but the thing that does have to be looked at is perhaps not playing Jordan Clark or, or to Heath Chong. I, although, you know, it's madness. You can't drop to Heath Chong. He's, He's lightning. He's electric in this league. And I really do rate him. So I feel it has to be Elijah and Morris playing up top together for this one. Yeah, I, I tend to agree. Chong had a great game last game against Millwall as well. In that first half in particular, they couldn't deal with him, could they? It wasn't just the post that he hit. He was absolutely incredible. I think second half was scrappy and didn't play to his strengths. But yeah, I agree with you on playing out from the back. I think Kaminsky, to be fair, is, is probably the weak link of that that system. But, you know, even from his own admission, that's not his strength. That That is, you know, when we bought him as a shot stopper. Um, and, you know, him uh, w- with his footwork ability can can struggle. Um, but we're not going to stop playing it, so we probably just need to kind of get used to having a mini heart attack every time um, we have the ball and we're under pressure, particularly with a one-goal lead. I think we're just going to have to swallow it and, and get used to it. Uh, it be a lot easier if they let you drink in the stands, but, you know, <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think, yeah, you're right with Clark. Um, it'll be interesting. I, I don't know whether we've had any news on what happened to Shandon Baptiste as well, because there still doesn't seem to be much out about where he went out of the squad or what injury he may or may not have picked up as well, because I think he would have a pl- part to play maybe even off the bench, but he he's certainly someone I'd like to, to see around it, making those chances as well. Yeah, so by the time this drops on YouTube, the uh, match pre-press conference would have come out mm. so uh, i think walters had an illness it was said i don't know about baptiste hopefully it was just a, a little tweak or, or something i guess we'll find out more but it's good to have those options in midfield anyway like walsh and Nakamba look absolutely fantastic they really do mm. and you know there's always pelly or oh, there's to be honest there are clark can do a job in there um in, in the absence of Walsh, like that, that's another thing. If Clark were to start, that means he is an option that can be brought on yeah. in case we need it. But I guess we've already discussed the lineup. So w- what would you change? It would just be Clark, right? Yeah, probably. It is. Yeah, I think so. Uh, um, there's a question mark over Walters as well, as we said. So possibly, I mean, I, uh, I wouldn't, as you've said already, I, I wouldn't get rid of Burke out of that side. I find that very, very harsh if he does. Um, but he, I could see Walters starting and I can see Clark coming off, for, like you say, Morris um, to support him. But I certainly think that that's, that's going to be needed at home as well when we're going to be pressing a bit more um, of the ball and we're going to have more possession. I think that's going to be an important one. Yeah. Could, could you see Victor Moses perhaps starting instead of Clark? That would be interesting. It would be interesting. I don't see him starting, no, not yet. Um, he's been too long out of football for me, um, or, or you know, too long playing competitive football. So I think he'll probably come off the bench. So I, I'm excited to see him, definitely. Um, obviously on the bench at Millwall, not the kind of game for him. I think this much far more likely would be. Um, I can't see him starting, um, but, you know, who, who knows? Uh, but it'll be yeah, exciting to see him come off the bench if he does. And most importantly, do you stand by your prediction from earlier on in the week? Yeah, I do. I feel I do feel really optimistic about it. That's always the kiss of death, isn't it, for these games? <laughs> um, but I do feel optimistic about it. I think it suits us to have a game like that at home against this opposition. Don't get me wrong, they're a great opposition if you give them the space and time on the ball. And if we make the same mistakes that we did at the very early start of the season against someone like Barry Bannon, who can pick a pass, we're going to be in trouble and playing through that midfield. But now Nakamba's in the team, I feel a much, much more comfortable with how we're playing and going forward with that that solidity at back. Um, I, can, I can see, I really, really hope to see it being a 3-0. I really want to see one of, if not both of those strikers getting off the mark as well. Um, I think so, that's going to be really important. Yeah, so I predicted a 2-1, but the optimist in me wants to go bigger. It really does. Mm. Um, I can't see us keeping a clean sheet. I just know there's going to be some 
harebrained idea in defense and we're going to pass it straight to them or something. So I would take my 2-1 to a 3-1. I just think the floodgates are going to open. I think Morris yeah. and Adebayo are going to open their accounts tomorrow. I just feel I, it. I really hope you're right. But I, I think if, if one of them scores early doors, then yeah, we could be in for a good afternoon. Yeah, you mentioned it earlier. Elijah loves scoring against Sheffield Wednesday. That that comeback from 2-0 down to 3-2. And I think that was Elijah's second goal for Luton. His first one was against Millwall. And then his yeah. second one came... I think this was... He replaced James Collins at half time. Yeah. And we, we right. fell in love. Yeah, that backstick header was fantastic. Obviously, uh, the roof would have come off, but there was no one there. Um, so everyone was just at home celebrating instead. Yeah, I remember that first goal against Millwall. Well, it trickled over the line, if I remember correctly. Um, was his first goal. Was it, first, it was his debut as well, wasn't it? He scored in his debut. Am I, am I that right? was am his. Right? It was his first game, but he came on as a sub. It took him yeah. a while to replace James Collins. Yeah, it did. It did. Uh, but no, yeah, that, that was a, a fantastic game at a time when we were pivoting between mid-table and, and being back in a relegation fight that season as well. I think that game was, was the turning point that made sure it was a relatively unusually comfortable, non-dramatic end to the season as well. Yeah, I mean, we should we should have the tools to beat them. We should know how to cope with their midfield. We should certainly know how to cope with Barry Bannon. I mean, he's played, played against them enough Wednesday. times. Well, he's been playing for Sheffield Wednesday since 1923. So you'd imagine that, that we, we know enough about him, but, you know, not negating his quality at all. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I'm feeling optimistic. I know it's probably the kiss of death, but I think this is the start, hopefully, of a, a good little run for us to start pushing us pushing us forward. I think it is, it is the start of a run. After this, we've got Plymouth away, Oxford at home, mm-hmm. Sheffield United away, which... Is quite a biggie. Then international break. And then back to back, we have Watford at home, Sunderland at home, and then Cov away. Yeah. <sighs> we need it to get really ramps up, those. doesn't it? Yeah. 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 Pick up form before those games is going to be really important, isn't it? Um, but uh, yeah, some really, uh, some really, uh, some really winnable games coming up. Definitely. Yeah. Well, I. To be honest, Plymouth, yes, we, we should be going there and winning. Oxford, yeah. though, they're no pushovers. No, 100% not. They're yeah. going to be tough. They're a good team as well. They will fight and, and we'll need to get a good couple of goals early on, I think, against them. But, but, but you know, we'll see. Lots can change in, in the few games between now and then for both sides' fortune. So, yeah, we'll see how we are before that. Yeah. Um, how many do you think we'll get from Sheffield Wednesday, Plymouth and Oxford? I, I'm going to I'm going to go with seven. I think that's quite conservative, actually, as well. I'm, I'm going for the full nine, mate. Yeah. Well, I'm being conservative because I don't want to be too arrogant about it. You know, they are, t- as you said, Oxford's a tough game. So I think maybe a draw against Oxford and a win against the other two. Definitely. Yeah, I just think at home, under the lights, Kenilworth Road. I reckon we could, it'd be a tight game, be difficult, but I reckon we could do it. And I, I think the table will start to look so different and also the team mentality ahead of, you know, going to Sheffield United, welcoming Watford, welcoming mm. Sunderland and then Cov. It could be very different because October is looking absolutely brutal as it is. It is. We need to get back into form under the lights as well. I really do. Kenny um, needs to Brighton. become a fortress. Yeah, exactly. It's been miserable the last two trips there, so we really do need a, a good performance under the lights um, and at home generally, definitely. Oh, we do indeed. But I think that's all we have time for today. A reminder, if you're watching this on our YouTube, give it a like subscribe to the channel and if you're listening to this on apple or spotify follow us why not you'll get everything straight sent to your phone it'll be amazing a big shout out to our audio partners black star amplification and carry on and also a big thank you to the record shop in amersham wherever you are in the country head on down to amersham they have all the vinyl 
you could ever want. And I guess let's have it, Sheffield Wednesday. Let's see what you got. As always, come on, you hatters. Come on, you hatters.